coming. It's really great to see all your shining faces here. Um, and I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you, Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it's so nice to see you. I remember faces from when I talked to a group of you at the lodge. So yeah, that's yeah. Okay. No, thank you. How was your drive up through all the construction? It's great. Uh, uh, Good, a breeze. Our first two. So, welcome to the Age Quake Theater performance of It's About Time. This is bittersweet for us. This is our last show of the season. So we're delighted, Maureen, to be in such a wonderful place. Let me first introduce the cast to you. Starting here, we have Bev Lemke. Bev has been with us since last September. Next to Bev, we have Judy. Judy has been performing with me for two years, three years? Two something. Two, two something. <laughs> then we have Liz who is not only acts, but also is a trained operatic singer, who has been with us this year since September. And then we have this tall guy, Carl, whose last name happens to be the same as mine. <laughs> <laughs> and next to him is Jerry. Jerry also sings and also performs with Rockford University, as well as some other groups in the Rockford area. And then we have Brenda Ray. And Brenda is a pianist. So what we've never been able to do is have Brenda play the piano and, and uh, Jerry and Liz, Liz sing. sing yeah. Maybe next year. So, uh, just a word about what you see in the program. Next to various characters' names, you see several of the cast members' names listed. Why is that? Because we're seniors and we're never quite sure what's going to happen next. <laughs> So if we have a performance set for whatever date, and I get a call saying, oh, my grandchild's going to be spending the weekend with me. OK, we have somebody else to it. So the point is that all of us have been, all of the cast have been rehearsing all of these roles. So for instance, we got here today, and they said, well, who's going to do what role? I said, oh, I don't know. Let me think about it. Hey, I've got an idea. How about this? And we all agreed. So everybody is trained to do different roles. Um, you can sit down for a minute. I want to talk about a couple of other things. Now, normally in a theater performance, somebody will say, if you've got one of these, would you please turn it off? I don't ask you to do that. Leave it turned on, and if somebody calls you, tell them to hurry up and get over here. <laughs> The order in which we're doing today's shows are we're going to do Calypso and I, then a cutting from a wonderful script that I absolutely adore that addresses an issue that is of concern to all of us, a cutting from the Waverly Gallery, and then we're doing our final one act, Stamina. But what's unique about Stamina is that the men are going to perform it and then the women are going to perform it. Then we're going to ask you a question. Got it? Anybody want to know what the question is? Which one is the short? Uh, Not yes. until after you see both versions. <laughs> okay. So, we are able to provide these performances free of charge because of a very generous grant from the Rockford Area Arts Council. That's why they are acknowledged on the very first page of the front page of your program. We're delighted to see you here. And if you leave here feeling inspired, we audition in August. Oh, I have one more thing to say. This is, you will see these people performing with a script in hand. Now, why do you think that's true? <laughs> what do you think they're afraid of? Forgetting. Memorizing, <laughs> exactly. Uh-huh. But I can tell you, if they worked hard enough, they could do it. So, we have the script in hand performance style because it allows us to focus more on creating the characters. Ladies and gentlemen, Calypso and I. Calypso and I by William Dare. Very happy to have you here. Our characters are a PA voice announcer, Jennifer Jen, 
who is a 30-something kind of woman, Ben, who is in his early 70s, he is generally fit and energetic, Mary, and Mary is Ben's younger daughter. She is portraying someone who is in her mid-30s, and Margaret. And Margaret is Ben's older daughter. She is portraying someone in her late 30s. The setting and the time, it is late evening, late fall. The location is a trailhound bus depot. It is a basic dingy bus depot sitting area. There is um, a ticket counter, and it is right about here. Vending machines over there, candy machine, a soda machine. Oh, and I can't forget, there is one lone artificial palm tree right about here, and it's a bit dusty. <laughs> so enjoy Calypso and I. Trailhound number 331 departing for Madison, Eau Claire, Minneapolis, and Fargo now loading at gate number one. Got my watch. Can you tell me what time it is? Uh, 10.40. Oh, great. Plenty of time. Thank you. Uh, hi. Uh, I'm Ben. Jennifer. Jen. Coming or going, Jennifer? Jen. Going. Davenport. You? Florida, heading down to the Keys. Marathon Key. Really? Vacation? Sort of. An extended one, you might say. And you, what's in Davenport? There is... I'm going to start a new job. Assistant manager at the Pine Plaza Bargain Bell. <laughs> hmm. Retail something you're interested in? No, not really. But my degree says retail management, which I guess means, yeah, I'm in retail. Supposedly, they're grooming me for my own store. So I guess I have that to look forward to. Hmm, but it's not your thing? My thing? No. My thing is writing. Short stories, mostly. But I'm working my way up to the great American novel. Hmm. So, why the degree? Mom, guess she got tired of watching me kicking around doing nothing for a couple of years. She said, get into retail. People always need to buy. Jeez, I didn't know what I wanted. She paid. I went. Four years later, out pops a shiny new assistant store manager for the Pine Plaza Market Men. Yay me! Hmm. But you're writing? Guess it just wasn't the right time. You can't eat rejection letters. Never thought that's where I was headed, that's for sure. Hmm. Yeah, I know the feeling. So, what's on Marathon? <laughs> the about time. Ain't she a beaut? A sailboat. Yeah, 39 foot, she's got a five foot keel. 
generator, and a galley. Sign the papers when I get down there. Huh. So, how long have you been sailing? Uh, well, <laughs> I haven't been, but I took lessons at the community college last summer. <laughs> You took lessons at a community college, and now you're buying a 30-foot sailboat? 39-foot. Jeez, you're starting to sound like my kids. Oh, no. I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to come off so judgy. Oh, I get it. Trust me. I've heard it all before. <laughs> you don't know how to sail, Dad. How are you going to pay for the sailboat, Dad? Mom wouldn't let you do this. What about sharks, Dad? Like I wouldn't know that she wouldn't approve. Live with the woman for 37 years. Don't get me wrong, I love my wife. But at 37 years of marriage, she never once took a risk. Never let her hair down. She was so uptight that when she farted, she'd whistle. <laughs> but now? I lost her. Last winter. Hey, winter. Cancer. Oh, oh, Ben. I am so sorry. Yeah. Mel was a good one. We raised two daughters, lived in the same house for 31 years. That included two broken arms, a tonsillectomy, five different cars, 15 goldfish, and a dog. She was a rock. Sounds nice. It was nice. Nice and safe and boring. So boring. Hmm. Anyway. I'm retired now. The house is paid for. Margaret and Mary are grown and have families of their own. And I've been waiting for the right time. And I figured, now, now's the right time to take the leap. Buy the sailboat. Buy her, live on her. Gonna sail the Caribbean. By yourself? Sure, why not? Maybe I'll get a cat or a parrot. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Sky's the limit. <laughs> That sounds really exciting. Good luck. Thanks. <coughs> I figure on sailing around the Keys for a while, kind of getting used to the bout time and getting my sea legs. And then maybe I'll head down to the island. We'll head down to the islands. We'll? The cat and I. Huh. She'll be a little calico. I think I'll name her Calypso. So Calypso and I'll sail around, fish a little, snorkel, Stop when we want, go when we want. Ever had conch fritters? I've always wanted to try conch fritters. Sounds like a little slice of heaven. Yep, been planning this for, geez, 15, 20 years. It's all up here. Every island, every harbor, currents, weather currents, how to tie knots, even a little Spanish and fish. Spanish and French. <coughs> wow, that's pretty impressive, Ben. Yep, I thank the public library and that internet thing. Well, when was the last time you were down there? Uh, well, uh, I haven't been. At all? No. Ever? No, not really. Made it as far as Disney once, but Mel didn't want to take the time to go down to the Keys. The girls had cheerleader camp or something. But I watched a lot of the Travel Channel on the booth, too. <laughs> but how do you know if you're even going to like it? You're kidding. What's not to like? No snow, tropical breezes, blue waters with white sandy beaches, a little marley, some steel drums, rum drinks with little tiny umbrellas. Hmm. Did I mention no snow? Hey, Winter. It sounds scary. I mean, exciting, really exciting, but a little scary, too. Jeez, I admire you. Seriously, I wish I could do something like that. Something to write about. A word of advice? Sure. Don't wait too long. 
Life has a way of getting away from you. Daddy! Come on, then. It's time to go home. Really, Daddy? Don't pretend you can't hear us. I hear you just fine. I just choose not to respond. Dad, Jim's got the basement all remodeled for you. It's really very nice. There's a, a fridge and a big screen. I'm not living in a hole in the ground. That's coming soon enough. Thanks anyway. I'm going to buy the bulk time. I'm going to sail the islands. And you are? Me? I'm nobody. Your dad and I have just been passing the time waiting for our buses. Sorry, Jen. These are my daughters, Mary Elizabeth and Margaret Catherine. Girls, this is Jen. And I'm sorry, I don't even know your last name. Palmer. And nice to meet you. Come on, Daddy. We have been all over this. But... No bus, Dad. No bus. But I... Come I on, have a Dad. ticket. Let's go home. But I have a ticket. No bus. You want to be a writer, Jennifer Jen? Then take this. Do it. Do it now. Trailhound, number 130, departing for Nashville, Atlanta, Miami, and Key West. Now loading at gate number one. All aboard. And in that show, there is a refrain that says, you don't have to sing, you don't have to dance, but nothing will happen till you take a chance. So let's change that pronoun to I, and I'll have you repeat that after me. I don't have to sing. I don't, don't have, have to sing. sing. I don't have to dance. I don't have to dance. But nothing will happen. But nothing, nothing will happen. happen. Till I take a chance. Till I take a chance. The next show that we're going to do for you is a cutting from Ken Lonegren's Away the, uh, the Waverly Gallery. The characters in this play are Gladys, who is a retired attorney who is in, this, in the very mid stages of developing Alzheimer's. Her grandson Daniel her daughter Ellen, and her son-in-law Howard. Gladys owns an art gallery in New York. She goes there every day, but nobody ever comes in. You will hear another character referred to as Don. Don is an artist who popped into New York City and was looking for a gallery where he could display his artwork. And Gladys said, sure, we'll have a grand opening. So our scene opens in the home of Gladys and Ellen and the son-in-law. It is sometimes challenging to find scripts that address issues of aging with dignity, respect, and often humor. This cutting from the Waverly Gallery addresses what is now becoming more and more prevalent in our aging population, Alzheimer's disease. This playwright treats this disease with respect and also allows us to catch a glimpse of how one family deals with an aging mother, grandmother, and mother-in-law. The characters are Ellen, Gladys' daughter, Howard, Gladys' son-in-law, Daniel, Gladys' grandson, 
and Gladys, the aging mother, mother-in-law, and grandmother. The setting is an apartment in New York City. It's almost time for dinner. Why don't you let me take you home? Oh, I, I had no idea it was so late. Uh, are you, are you tired? No, no, it's not late, but it's, it's time to go home. Oh, all right, all right. Now let me find my purse. Your purse is on the back, on the back of the chair. Oh, oh, oh. well, well I, I don't have my keys. And I have your keys. I have them right here. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, wait a minute, let me make sure that I've got everything. I don't know where I put put my, oh, yeah. I there she goes, there she goes. I don't know where yeah, what, yeah. what are you looking for? Oh, I'm looking what? for my keys. Your I keys, find you're them. right here. I have them in my hand. Oh, right there. Oh, oh. Well, where did you find them? You gave them to me this morning. It, it's, it's time to go home. Well, Ellen, um, do you know how to cook? I've been cooking your dinner here every Wednesday for 20 years. <laughs> well, where did you learn how to fix it up and who told you? You know, the one, the one in the back. He says he's leaving because his mother doesn't want him there. No, it's got nothing to do with his mother. What? He's leaving because the hotel is taking back the gallery. Oh, yes, I know that. But he has that. to go back because he doesn't have a job, and you have to get out of the gallery. Well, well, then what am I going to do all day long? You know, I can't stay cooped up in that place all day long by myself. I all will go crazy. Well, well, we can talk about that later. I think I'm going to look around. I'm gonna look around and set myself up in a, in a little saying, office so she or something. A lot of words. You know, I could yeah, still yeah. be a lawyer. I still have my paper, my passport. I could do a little of it. I, I don't need much, but I've got to let's do just, something. Let's just get the gallery settled first, and then we can worry about that later. You know, I think I'll go and talk to the one who runs the hotel. I know There's his daughter. There's nothing to talk to him about. What? There is nothing to talk to him about. Oh, well, well yeah, one thing at a time. Uh, I guess that's very wise. We'll do it one word at a time. And oh, look at the dog. She looks so hungry. No, 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 don't feed her. her. Poor thing. She's already eaten. She's getting too fat. Don't feed her. Well, why are you so angry? I told you 10,000 times not to feed her. She's too fat and she's already eaten. Well, why are you so angry at me? What did I do? Well, I'm not going to stay here where nobody wants me. I I'm not. And she keeps yelling at me. I don't understand what I did. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home and kill myself. Uh, uh, where is my purse? I lost my it's purse. It's on the arm of your chair. Oh. It's right here. Oh. Well, I don't want to stay here if you're going to yell at me. I, I don't know what I did. I want to get another place. You know, he, he won't take me. He won't take the picture down, and he says he's going the key, home. Get your keys. Where are your keys? Oh. The keys, they're, they're in your bag, but you don't have to leave. Do you want some coffee? You know, if he leaves the pictures up, I can't do it by myself. And I don't understand do what's the matter. You want some coffee? I'm not yelling at you. Everything's fine. I can't find my money. I can't. Hold on a minute. Sit down. Uh, someone's at the door. Someone? I'll get it. Yeah, okay. I have to go to the doorbell. Just wait one second. Oh, but I, I can't buy my money. You, you don't need any money. Mom, I'm getting yeah, it. Don was at the door, and he's going to take you home in a taxi. Oh, but does he know the yes, way? Yes, he knows the way. But I haven't got my keys. Just another evening at the fine house. They're in your bag. The keys are in your 
They're in your bag. Oh, I don't I'm understand sorry. anything. I can't go here. home without my Don't cry. Piece. Don't cry. There's nothing to cry about. What? There's nothing to cry about. Well, what's wrong with crying? Sit down. Take your time. Look, Don's here now, and he's going to take you home in a taxi. I'll call you in the morning when you're feeling good. I can't breathe. Because you're in a panic. I am in a panic and I can't breathe just, and I just am sit, dizzy. Sit down. Sit down. All right. Nothing's wrong with you. You're oh. just upset. All right. All right. Come on. Don't, don't, don't cry. Don't cry. I don't want to go in the street. You're not going on the street. No one's going on the street. You're going to settle down and then Donna's taking you home in a taxi and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Later that same night, after Don has taken Gladys home, a clock chimes 12. The lights are on in the hallway between Gladys and Daniel's apartment. Gladys, wearing an old house coat, slowly walks to Daniel's door and rings the bell. A loud, horrible electric buzzer of a doorbell. There is a pause. She rings it again. Another pause. She turns around and starts to walk slowly back to her door. Hello. Oh, hello, hello. Hello, what's the matter? Oh, I'm so sorry, sweetie. Did I wake you? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, you know, I tried to ring your doorbell yesterday. Nobody was there. I didn't know where you were, and I was very worried, and you weren't home. So what? Well, I didn't know where you were, and where is your mother? I, I tried to call I'm her, but now, she's not home and either. And Mama's asleep. You probably... Oh, what, honey? You probably misdialed. Mom is asleep. It's after midnight. Oh. Oh. Do you want to come in and sit down? No. I want to go back to sleep. It's very late. Oh. All right. I'm, I'm awfully sorry that I woke you, honey. That's okay. Uh, are you like me? Uh, do you go right back to sleep? Yes. Okay. Oh, all right, honey. I'm so sorry. It's uh, all right. Where did your mother go, honey? Is she in your apartment? No. Well, why didn't she say goodbye to me? You know, she was here before and then she ran out. What? I didn't. Mom wasn't I don't here. know why. And no. Why did no. she do that? Listen a minute. What Listen. did I do Listen. to her? Earlier in the evening, at Ellen and Howard's apartment, Gladys sits in a rocker. Ellen sits on the sofa, looking through a mail order catalog. Daniel and Howard stand nearby. It was the most depressing thing I ever saw. Nobody comes in all day long. She's behind the desk, oblivious like she's hosting a party. And Don's standing around eating cheese in this empty gallery and he says to us, I've been waiting for this day my whole life. It was cheese. Jesus Christ. It was the most depressing thing I ever saw. Jesus Christ. That is really depressing. Dan, I called my folks last night. My mother picked up and she was very upset crying and she says, I can't stand it anymore. He's terrible. He's driving me crazy. He won't listen to anybody. He's so awful. So I said, listen, he's 93 years old. Life's a little difficult. Put him on the phone. He gets on the phone. And I say, listen, Dad, what's the matter? Mom seems very upset. I'll tell you what's the matter. I knew this marriage was a mistake 63 years ago. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm getting a divorce. I'm moving to China. So what do you think of that? Wow. <sighs> so things are good all over with the old folk, right? If you don't lose your marbles and one of you doesn't die young, you get old together. <laughs> our star, man. <laughs> our star. Our star.
actually living that very experience when he was studying acting in New York. So the play is really autobiographical, okay? Um, and it deals with the issue of Alzheimer's. And as all of us are aging, we're becoming more aware of that, right? Yeah. Yep. And we probably know somebody who, who has Alzheimer's or who is the beginning stages of dementia. So what Kenneth does in this play is treat the whole issue with great loving care. What makes him have such a strength as a playwright, the authorities say, is that he writes dialogue that's just the way we talk. So from, for a couple of times in this performance, you heard them talking over one another. It is written that way. Because that's what we do. We talk over one another very, very frequently. So uh, the, uh, the Waverly Gallery, if you ever see it being performed anywhere, <coughs> please go see it. When it was done on Broadway, Eileen Hecker played the role of Gladys at the age of 83. So it's possible. And now, let's clear the stage. We need to get the table out of here. <coughs> And as long as the two guys are up here, okay, this is the male version of stamina. Stamina by Donna Cass. Our characters are Jerry, portraying an 81-year-old, and Carl, portraying an 81-year-old. The setting is Mount Everest. It is the Hillary Step. And Carl and Jerry are clipped to ropes on a sharp ridge of ice and snow. And Jerry removes his face mask. Ooh, almost. Ooh, almost there. Oh, 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 oh no. Carl. <laughs> Falling! Falling! Belay on. Uh, wait, wait, I'm fine. Uh, uh, my cramp done slipped. Oh, good. Uh, oh, I can breathe. What? I said I can breathe without my oxygen mask. Maybe we can summit without oxygen. Don't push it. Climbing is pushing it, Carl. I thought there was supposed to be a bottleneck here. Yeah, but we left before anyone else. Tim? I think my boot's stuck in this crevice. That's not good. Ugh. Wiggle it. Wiggle your foot back and forth. Tried that. This is the worst possible place to get yourself I stuck. I didn't do it on purpose. I really can't think of a worse place Ugh. to get yourself stuck here on the Hillary Step. We're the closest we can possibly be to outer space without a, being in a rocket. Not a good place. Oh, shut up, Jerry. <laughs> I'm afraid that's going to be on the video. What? My GoPro helmet cam. Remember, I'm recording our achievement. Hey, did you get that? <laughs> I did, and I'll have to uh, edit it out. If we survive. Don't say that. If we survive. Stop it. Try moving your heel up and down, side to side, up and down, oh. side to side. Oh, my foot's out, Jerry. Good. Climb on. No. No. Carl, one does not pause while summiting Everest. You'll turn yourself into a snow cone statue that way. I can't do it. Can't do what? Climb, Jerry. Climb. What else would I be talking about? Not being able to drive my car or touch my toes? <laughs> Jeez. Carl, according to my calculations, we're 30 minutes, just 30 minutes from becoming the oldest man ever to summit Mount Everest. Well, this old man has the bail. Well, well, we, we trained for months. That all matters to you? No. Then shut up and listen to me. I've been thinking about this ever since we entered the death zone. What? Anyone close to death? should not go near a place called the death zone. But we're fine. We're fine. Not we're here, we're fine. Not me. I can't go on. Ugh. Why not? Because I remembered I left the iron on. Oh, what do you think? <laughs> Why? You can do it, Carl. No, Jerry. No, I cannot. This was a stupid idea. Now it's over. 
It's not over. You don't listen. Anybody ever tell you that? You're experiencing altitude sickness. Oh, no, no. I need to lie down. You cannot lie down. No one lies down on Mount Everest, Carl, and ever gets back up. Oh, that sounds good to me. <laughs> You're not thinking straight. Put on your mask. Drink some hot liquid. If I don't make it back, play this for my children. Goodbye, Jeremy and Miranda. The key's in the safe in the small box on top of the... Oh, I don't remember. Good luck finding it. You get all of that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, Carl. Come on, this instant. Our window of opportunity is closing. Where did that expression come from? Window of opportunity. Lovely. <coughs> come on, Carl. Come on. No, I, I would like to know you made it, Jerry. You're starting to really scare me now, Carl. <coughs> Will you pass me on the way down? I'm, and if I'm still alive, just give me a little nudge, and I'll know that you made it. You're not making any sense. I'm going to unclip myself from the rope now and step off to the side. Play <coughs> off! No, put your belay on. Forget Back about it. on right now. Forget about me, Jerry. I will not. <coughs> I'll tell everyone for the rest of my life that you gave up. I'll make sure that you're forever remembered as the one who proved <coughs> old men have no stamina. Well, we don't, and you're welcome, everyone. <laughs> Carl, you're my oldest and dearest friend. Hmm. Carl, listen to me. Listen to me. I would have let you go up first. You could have been the oldest man ever to reach the top of Everest. Well, since you're older than I am, Jerry, you would have broken my record the minute that you summoned it. I'm younger than you, Carl. You're older by five days. Not so. Your birthday is September 13th. My birthday is September 18th. Uh, that's my birthday. It's mine as well. I always wanted to be older than you, so I've been lying to you about my date of birth. That's ridiculous. In high school. You were dating Mary, mm -hmm. and I was dating Anne, mm -hmm. and I wanted Anne to think she was dating someone more mature. By five days? <laughs> Women love older men. <laughs> By five days? It mattered to me then that I was older than you. By five whole days? <laughs> yes, I was born on September 18th at 2.27 in the afternoon. I was born September 18th at 9.07 in the morning. For seven hours and 20 minutes, my senior. And you've been keeping that from me for 60 years? 61. Why? It mattered to me back then. It doesn't matter now. The truth would have come out only if we both reached the summit. Only one of us could have claimed the title, oldest man on top of the world. Then I'm glad you'll get your chance. Uh, you better leave now if you want to get there. Oh, I believe I've been standing in one place too long. My leg is frozen. Uh, you are lying. And I don't believe that birthday story either. You just made it up because ever since we have been friends, you've been ordering me around, trying to make me do what you want me to do. I have never in my life ordered you to do anything. Don't you lay down, Carl. <laughs> uh, all right, fine. Lay, lay down and die. Turn yourself into a lump of ice for all I care. Buy into the story they've been telling you ever since you were born. What story? That old men have no stamina, that old men are not good enough. Baloney. Why I ever chose you to accompany me, uh, I'll never know. Because I'm the only one that would go with you. No, it's because when we're together, there's nothing we can't do. I picked you because you have always believed in me. I have. I'm stronger when I'm with you, Carl, and that's the truth. I'm sorry if I pushed you into this. You never pushed me into anything, Jerry. That's the truth. Carl, look. Do you see that right down there? Oh, you mean those lights? Yeah, I bet that's, those are the headlamps of those jerks from Altitude Expeditions. They're moving up fast. And they're the ones who nicknamed us the old goats of the Himalayas. The very ones. <laughs> mm. 
I hate those guys. <laughs> this place is going to be a bottleneck in about 10 minutes. We could beat them to the top. Who we will be the old ghost. We now. will, damn. Who cares? Who cares? Well, why? Do we have any? Why do we have to prove anything? I don't know. We just do. All right, let's go. What? Play on. Oh, uh, I'm getting a second win. Carl. Oh, Carl, I'm so happy. I promise I will never, ever again tell you to. Don't push it, Jerry. Let's just do this. Right. Play on. Climb on, Carl. Climb on, Jerry. the male version of stamina and we're also going to present the female version when we are done with that we're just going to want to get a feeling from you of who you thought was more inspiring to you the male version or the female version um, and we'll talk about that later so our characters for the female version are Clara and she is portraying an 81-year-old woman. And Simone, another 81-year-old woman. And it is, again, the Hillary Stamp Stamina. <clears throat> Almost there. Oh. Oh, oh no. Clara, falling! Lay on! Oh, oh. Wait, I'm fine. My cramp might slip. I can breathe. What? I said I can breathe without my oxygen mask. Maybe we can sum it without oxygen. Don't push it, Simone. Climbing is pushing it, Clara. I thought there was supposed to be a bottleneck up here. We left before anyone else. Oh. Damn, I think I got my boot stuck in a crevice. That is not good. Wiggle your foot back and forth. <sighs> Try that. Because it's the worst possible place to get yourself stuck. I didn't do it on purpose. Well, I can't think of another place where it would be this bad as this. Here on the Hillary Step, the closest we could possibly get to reaching outer space without a rocket. Not a good place at all. Oh, shut up, Simone! I'm afraid that will be on the video. What? My GoPro helmet cam. I'm recording our achievement, remember? There, did you get that? Yes, and I will edit it out. If we survive. Don't say that. If we survive. Stop, stop. Try moving your heel up and down, side to side. Up and down, side to side. Oh, my foot is out, Simone. Good, climb on. No. Clara, one does not pause while summiting Everest. You will turn into a snow cone statue there. I can't do it. You can't do what? Climb, Simone, climb. What do you think I was talking about? Never being able to drive my car again and touch my toes? <laughs> According to my calculations, we're just 30 minutes from becoming the oldest women to summit Mount Everest. Well, this old woman has to bail. But we trained for months. Is that all that matters to you? No. Then shut up and listen to me. I've been thinking about something. Ever since we entered the death zone. What have you been thinking about? Well, anyone close to death should never go near any place called the death zone. But we are here and we are fine. Not me. I cannot go on. Why not? I just remembered I left the iron on. Why do you think why not? You could do it, Clara. No, Simone, I cannot. It was a stupid idea, and now it's over. It is not over. You don't listen. Did anyone ever tell you that? You are experiencing altitude sickness. Oh, I need to lie down. You cannot lie down, Claire. No one lies down on Mount Everest and ever gets back up. Sounds good to me. You're not thinking straight. Put your mask back on. Drink something hot. If I don't make it, play this back for my children. Goodbye, Jeremy. Miranda. The key to the safe is in a little box on top of the 
Uh, oh, I can't remember. Uh, good luck finding it. Come on, Clara. Our window of opportunity is closing. Oh, where did that expression come from? Window of opportunity. It's lovely. Come on, Clara. I would like to know that you made it. You're Simone. really starting to scare me now, Clara. When you pass me on the way down, if I'm still alive, just give me a nudge and I'll know. You're not making any sense. I'm going to unclip myself now and step off the side. Belay off. No, 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 put, 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 put your belay back on right now. Forget about me, Simone. I will not. I will tell everyone for the rest of my life that you gave up. I will make sure that you are the forever remembered as the one who proved women have no stamina. Well, we don't. So you're welcome, everyone. You are my oldest and dearest friend. Hmm. Clara, listen to me. I'm going to let you go up first. You could have been the oldest woman ever to reach the top of Everest. Well, since you are older than I am, you would have broken that record the minute you summoned it. I'm younger than you are, Clara. You are older by five days. Not so. Your birthday is September 13th. My birthday is September 18th. That's my birthday. It is mine as well. I always wanted to be older than you, so I've been lying about my date of birth. That's ridiculous. It's high school, you were dating Harold, and I was going with Peter, and I wanted Peter to think he was dating someone more mature. By five days. Men love older women. By five days. It mattered that I was older than you. By five whole days. Yes. I was born September 18th at 2.27 in the afternoon. I was born September 18th at 9.07 in the morning. You are seven hours and 20 minutes my senior. And you've kept, me, kept this for me for 60 years? 61. Why? It mattered to me back then. It, it doesn't matter now. The truth would have come out only if we both reached the summit. Only one of us could have claimed the title oldest woman on top of the world. Then I'm glad you'll get your chance. You better hurry if you're going to make it. I believe I've been standing in one place for too long. My, my leg is frozen. You are lying. And I don't believe your birthday story either. You made it up because ever since we've known each other, you've been trying to make me do what you want me to do. I have never in my life ordered you to do anything. Don't you lie down, Clara. Oh, All right, fine. Lay down and die. Turn yourself into a lump of, of ice for all I care. Buy into the story they have told you all your life, ever since you were born. What story? Women aren't good enough. Baloney. Why I, I chose you to accompany me, I will never know. Because I'm the only one who would go with you. No. It's because... When we're together, there's nothing we can't do. I picked you because I've always, you've always believed in me. I have. I'm stronger when I'm with you, Clara, and that's the truth. I'm sorry if I pushed you into this. You never push me into anything, Simone, and that's the truth. Clara, look, did you see that? Right down there. Oh, you mean those lights? I bet those are the headlamps of those jerks from the altitude expeditions. They're moving up fast. Are those the ones that nicknamed us the old hags of the Himalayas? Very ones. Oh, I hate those guys. This place is going to be a bottleneck in about 10 minutes. We could beat them to the top. Who will be the old hags then? We will, damn it. Who cares? <laughs> Why do we have to prove anything? I don't know. We just do. All right. Let's go. What? I'm getting a second wind. Well, hang on. Claire, I'm so happy. I promise I will never, never Don't get push it, Simone. Let's just do this. Right. Belay on. Belay on, Simone. Climb Come on. on. Come on. Now you've seen both versions, the female version and the male version of stamina. So we're going to... Um, uh, can we have all of you, the two men and the two women, come sure. up here? <laughs> and um, so the question we're asking is, which of <laughs> which of these um, inspired you to maybe think about doing something you've never done before? So we need your applause. Was it the female version? <laughs> or was it the male version? And I think it was pretty much the 
They all did a great job. I'd like to ask you to just join me in a round of applause for the, the, all the time and talent that they have dedicated to bringing this performance to you. We rehearsed for about two and a half hours every Friday, uh, and we've been doing that since November. So please, thank you.